This time I'll call the Budget and Person Committee meeting to order. And ask Pat, if you would, please call row. Lyle? Here. Lewis? Here. Melton? Mitchell? Here. Samples? Here. You have a quorum. Pat, if you would, please make the emergency announcement. <clears throat> In the event of an emergency evacuation, an alarm will sound. Everyone should exit the building by way of the nearest stairwell in a safe and effective manner. If the nearest stairwell is blocked by smoke, use the other stairwell. Do not use the elevator. Once you've reached the main floor, follow the exit signs to exit the building and quickly proceed away from the building. Please be mindful of others evacuating and of emergency vehicles. Thank you. Now I'll ask if there's any public input of items on the agenda. Seeing none, item D, this is for information only purchasing. Y'all have a copy of the minutes in your packet. Uh, these need to be approved. Do I have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Second. Any discussion? I'll ask for a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, finance increases and transfers. Uh, if, this, if these are approved, these items will then go on to the commission for, for their approval. Increases F1, F1A, register of deeds, office restructuring 12,058. Uh, Just kind of some, Phyllis can give you some of the specifics if you've got any questions, but Generally, what we've done on some of these items um, is to recommend that we start transitioning some of our investments in technology for those departments that could pay for them. As you know, most of the um, elected official operations like registered deeds, they have a reserve for technology where they collect fees for that purpose. This is one of those times when we'll be addressing some of those technology investments. In order to schedule these things and John have the time to manage those transitions, I encourage them to bring them now rather than wait and try to incorporate it as part of the budget for next year because if we have the money now, we need to go ahead and start getting the plan implemented now. So that's the tone behind most of these and the impetus behind most of it. So, Phyllis, I don't know if you've got anything you want to share with them or not. but. I've kind of encouraged them to do it now. F1A. Okay, to get it on the floor for discussion, and move for approval or passage on to the full commission. Can I have a motion? I think that he's got the wrong meeting for that thing off. I think the meeting that was pulled up on mine was the January yeah, meeting. I'm sorry, and I, I had to go back, close it out, and bring up the February meeting. Start saying that looked like what I was looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Should be February. Supposed to be right here. If I pull away that, that's what I get. I got I've got the Thank you, John. We've all got the wrong thing. We've got the wrong agenda pulled up on I cannot believe in the area of technology I'm the only one that's got it right. You got that with that we're on the Oh, okay. Is that what it is? Actually, that's one way to make the meeting short, just to do it over and over again. <laughs> Don't mess with mine, John. I got mine pulled up right. <laughs> Say that a little bit louder, John. because I think everybody else has changed now. Has anybody got a commercial they want to play? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, yeah, thank you. <laughs> We'd already plowed that ground. Kind of 
my face to tell you I wondered about that. <laughs> you got to do that with everyone. I'll do that under J down here. We're all right. All right, let's start back over. Here. <clears throat> Item F1A, uh, the um, 12058 dollars is is what we were discussing that Randy had just explained to us, and we had asked if Phyllis had anything to add on that. Does anybody have any? Well. I proposed a motion to okay. move it forward. We need a second. We got to get a second for discussion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. okay. Open Thank for discussion. Steve, second. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's my understanding, as, as you stated this, Ms. Crisp, that, that this is money, the revenue stream is money generated by fees. Yes, sir. And so this is not necessarily, this is all within the scope of your office and plan for on yes. this particular item. Yes, sir. Okay. All accounted for by, by the fees, fees that are predetermined to be for this. Yes, sir. Okay. Good deal. Thank you. As is the next one we're getting ready to discuss, F1B. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. The, the distinction is we're actually increasing revenue with 1A to pay for the expenses that she's proposing that allows her to transition her staff to start doing the new technology piece and to adapt for the pending retirement that she's looking at. And what is the technology piece for this bill? What, what it, is it that? It's the second we, item. That's yeah. not 1A. Should we consider that one first? Well, we divided the baby just so you all would have both pieces. Are you saying the, the fees are up by the, two and a half? Fees are up. Um, for example, um, we, uh, um, for um, the county fees in 11 and 12, um, we had a total of 644,429.52. And from July to December, we had already collected 437,819.57. Um, we are um, um, experiencing a lot more re recordings, um, um, more customers coming in, we're back scanning, um, and, and like um, Randy had said, I have employees that are looking to retire within the next year, and so I'm trying to get prepared for that transition. Um, I don't want to sound um, like you can't just come in and and do our job. It it takes some training and um, it's, a, it's real meticulous. We have to be um, trained for this, this job. You can't just be turned loose and, and, and go. You have to, there's a lot of um, record keeping that we have to do. And um, so I feel like I need someone to step, be there for that transition when the restructuring starts. So that's the the need for the additional twelve thousand. Given given her revenue stream, the way that's performing right now, she will have more. We felt very comfortable that those revenue estimates could be increased to twelve thousand dollars to pay for this increased mm -hmm. expense. Steve, the two and a half percent is just the distinction of what type of revenue this is. It's not a two and a half percent increase. Any and word? as I told you a couple of years ago, I'm very frugal, and what tax dollars we spend, that's my tax dollars also, and I'm not going to spend outside of my budget 
um, um, for staying within and, and doing what's best for the county. I'm very mindful of how I spend, and, and I think I've held to that the last couple of years. And I am operating with less than what previous years. And my numbers are up, the workload's up, um, so I think I'm justified in, in asking for this. If I'm reading this correctly, Randy, there's still gonna be at least a hundred minimum of hundred and fifty thousand dollars in that account after this. Okay, now on the DP fees, the one that you're yeah. you're that money is there. I just need to transfer <coughs> it. It can only be used for, DP. for data right. processing. So that's not coming out of county at all. Mm -hmm. That money can only be used for that. Mm -hmm. And the need, I guess I can jump on to, now do I need to wait? Yeah, let us vote on this. Okay. It, it would have actually been a lot more easy to understand if we'd have flipped those and started <laughs> with the progressive scanning system and come into this. It would have been easier for you to explain, I think. Do we have any more discussion on this? We're still on the 12th. F one A, twelve thousand fifty eight. I'll ask for roll call vote. Lael? Yes. Leland? Yes. Melton? Mitchell? Yes. Sample? Yes. The motion passed. F one B. This is the uh, progress scanner <coughs> scanning system. The technology upgrade, $63,202. Randy, do you want to lead into that or do you want to let Phyllis just pick? They have 233664 dollars and change in the bank right now. We're asking, she's asking that you appropriate 63000 to go with some money she already has in her operating budget for technology so she can upgrade her software. Move it to the agenda. Second. Any discussion? What, Phyllis, what will that upgrade get us? I mean, how's that, how will it help us? Okay, as, as John could tell you, we're working on a, a broken <coughs> rubber band right now. And Progress has loaned us a server because ours is, is shot. Um, this will bring us, we're currently um, using um, 2003 windows. This will upgrade us to 2012 windows. Also, in that 63,000 that'll be coming out, we get our first year's maintenance, which is like 26,000, um, anywhere from 26,000 to 31,000 we'll recoup that back. That'll be fees that we won't pay. You know, that'll be like getting a year free. It would cost us more to um, keep trying to repair or, or whatever, and it's not gonna update with our system, our, our visual recorders and, and all that. Um, it's going to be taking us, and our current server is like a 2000. Um, it's going to take us to 2012. And um, the, this is recommended to do um, every five years to keep you current with your software. So is it new software and a new server as well? Mm -hmm. This uh, This new equipment and software, this will make you compatible with the state reporting requirements and all the... Yes, sir. All the... Uh, uh, probably there's been a, quite a bit of, of changes in the re reporting requirements from the state since uh, yes, the sir. original. And uh, I'm amazed You have that, your licensing and, and all that that you have to keep. Right. Fine. And I'm amazed that you've gotten this much use out of the software because mm -hmm. Usually, and, and, and you're right, it would have made it easier for the explanation because anytime you move from one version of Windows to the next, 
it's not just flipping a switch. There's a lot right. of retraining that should be involved there. So. Right. Yeah, and but, see, what we have to do is, is our system has to back up each, mm -hmm. each day so that, you know, Nashville has copies of our um, business for the day and, and all that. And um, we had two servers that you work off of. One just went completely, completely down. And uh, so I'm just afraid that if we don't do this, then we're going to be in some serious maintenance problems. And um, so. Is there a danger of loss of records? You know, should that no, happen? not because we have this server right. online. And, and I expressed last year that this was something that that was going to have to be done this year. And I just trying to just grease and grease and grease and, and uh, keep it as long as, as we could without, you know, having to spend the money. But it gets to a point, yeah, you, know, you got to pay the piper. What's the service or the server part of that expense? Um, I'm sorry, I don't think I brought that with me. But um, I did get um, some information today um, from Progress, and it said currently um, the latest proposed Windows 2012, this is the beginning of the product life cycle and will be the biggest return on the investment given the life cycle of software product. Um, the server 2000, which is no longer a supported version by Microsoft. Uh, the replacement will also be the 2012, which will be required for future, future visual recorder upgrades, but also buys the longest software life cycle. Does it have the cost of the software on there? I do not have that with me, and I'm sorry. Um, that's Jackie's. Dana, it could be. I don't have that. I don't have that with me. I'm sorry. So it, it, if it's nine, though, they'd make the server 54? Well, you've got your maintenance fee considered in there also, a year's maintenance fee that's considered oh, okay. in thought, with that. I thought they were giving us, I thought we were getting that. That includes that. It's not just, that. It, that's included in that price. So we should. Part of the reason I was encouraging everybody to speed this up is we won't have to budget for that next year. You won't have to increase your operating budget next year if we can get it installed sometime around July the 1st. Okay. Because usually the, the installation includes one year of maintenance. And I would have to pay that one year's maintenance no matter right. whether I get the system or not. You know, so that's, that would be included. So that In maintenance that fee is about 20, what The you maintenance say? fee is probably anywhere from 26 to 31,000, something. Wow. Mm -hmm. They serve us, um, like, if we have something that goes wrong, um, we can't connect for some reason or whatever, we call them, they work remotely, fix us, um, they work in conjunction with, with John on things that we have to, um, have to do, so. Yeah. And they come in if there's a problem with the server or whatever, they come in, take care of that. And is that for the courthouse in general? Is that that's just office. for your just, area? Mm -hmm. Does everybody pay a similar fee to that for their system? I can't answer that. Randy, do you know that? It's, it's different. 
different. It's probably predicated on the number of users you have. So if you're a larger registered deeds office with more users, you'll pay a little bit more. Is it all by the same provider? I have progress. I don't know. Um, Scott, do you have a, any kind of system in place? You don't have anything, do you? Kathy, do you have? there's a way to get a package deal. Well, Phyllis showed it to me, and I've slept since I, she showed it to me, but generally speaking, you've got hardware there's components. It'll be individual workstations and a server. Second component you'll have will be the site licenses for the actual software you're using, and then there's a maintenance support that the company provides her to keep her up and running. Those are generally the components that you would have, if, if I remember it correctly. I have a question, Randy. Uh, just help me understand the eleven thousand seven ninety eight. You say that's in account seven oh nine, and then the balance is what's coming out of the two thirty three sixty four. Correct. Is that a different account from seven oh nine? Because I'm, me. What, what, what is this account seven oh nine? Is that the? That's uh, a data processing. We uh, collect okay. that. Yeah, I understand. In our recording fees. Okay, so what is, Randy, what's the account then for data processing if these are two separate monies? Last, the, the, the 709 that you've got is what you have in your operating budget to spend already. For this current budget? For this current budget. And this, so what is the account where the 233 is? It's a, it's a balance sheet account. It's the, the portion of fund balance that is reserved for this specific purpose. And we're gonna pull the 63 out of that? Out of that, yes. So we'll still have 180,000? Yes. Okay. In, any of the fee offices that collect money for a specific purpose like this, that money is reserved separately in the, on the balance sheet for their use. But it's reserved as fund balance? That's correct. Okay. Can you find it, if you would, and we don't have to do it tonight, obviously, because we don't have enough info, but can we find out if this is the same provider for each office holder? Is John still here? I know we've discussed this. No, 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 no. It, this, is, this is a provider that services register of deeds functions. Oh. To my knowledge, I mean, they may do something else, but I'm not aware of it. So they would go into different counties, register deeds offices. I'm not aware of them doing anything for trustees or, or uh, clerks, county clerks. I mean, they might, I just don't know it. Explain, explain the, uh, what, the, what it means when you're actually buying the uh, services for the programs that they're putting in each one of the departments. Okay, I'm a, a little bit behind the curve on this, but essentially she's getting a new server and the new server operating system includes the SQL. Then she's getting her software, the maintenance cost for that for one year as part of this. And th this company only provides a uh, package for registered deeds. So in a little while you're going to hear about Scott's wants to get a package that's uh, for the trustee's office. Which is a different company. Different company completely. Yeah, well, it won't be this company because they don't, as far as I know, they don't offer don't trustee parking packages. Okay. That, that's kind of what I was wondering, yeah. if we could get some kind of a package discount if they offered that service to other departments, but if they only do <coughs> registered needs, then, then it. Yeah. So basically, the, the, this maintenance thing that they're doing is specific to the hardware What's, and software of that program and, w and right. it wouldn't well, necessarily, some of, some it's of the not a blanket type thing. There will thing. be some it's maintenance specific. costs associated with the operating system and the server, but a lot of the maintenance costs that sh you're, you're seeing is the cost of keeping that software exactly. today. Exactly. I'm familiar with some other situations where uh, there is that component in there. And, and these guys, it is specific only to a certain type of software and so forth. So I understand that. Mr. Lewis. Um, I found some information here. 
um, on the servers, um, and this was a, a rough estimate. This is, is for another register's um, office, so I can't, you know, the money's going to be a little different. But for the um, servers, with um, it's going to be $20,328. Um, the um, Dell Equalogic High Performance Drives, the dual controller, which has the rack rails, the rapid rails for Dell Rack, is 24708 Then you have a Dell Power uh, switch, that's 46000 I mean, 4699 um, Anyway, it has all these different things that has to go along with um, with your servers. Um, the license for that, which is included in this price, is $3,148. Um, the insulation includes the hardware, the software components, uh, the purchase and migration from current servers, including Windows security, visual recorder application software, and all existing data. Thank you, Phyllis. Yes. <clears throat> Any other questions? Any more discussion? No. I'll ask for a roll call vote. Lyle? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Milton Mitchell? Yes. Sample? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you. F1C uh, library authorization to apply for a technology grant. Kathy, you present that or? Most of that is negotiated within its, you know, whatever the context of that <coughs> contract is. This is a, a technology grant that originates with the federal government and the Library Services and Technology Act, and then it's administered by the state of Tennessee to public libraries. Um, we had applied for uh, an amount to replace some of our aging PCs. Some of them are used by the public. Some of them are used by staff. <clears throat> We're trying to get them all to the point where we no longer have XPs, trying to make the, the uh, operating systems more similar so that it doesn't take quite um, so much effort to keep everything running. The amount that the state would provide is $3,998, and you have documentation to support that. And then the friends, you have a copy of their minutes where they agreed to match the amount that's required by the grant to the, uh, to the tune of $4,000. So there is no additional money needed from the county or from the two cities. It's being funded through the grant and through the matching money from the friends. Uh, we are required to purchase the, the computers through the state <clears throat> bid, and they will come in at about $700 apiece. I move recommended the commission. Second. You have a motion to second. Discussion? Unless for roll call vote. Lael? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Milton? Mitchell? Yes. Sample? Yes. Thank motion you. Passed. Thank you. Thank you. Ellie. F2 or transfers. F2A, uh, General County, Chantry Court, Clerk and Master. Allocations, codes to correct salary raise changes, 2,461. Randy, you going to explain that? Somehow, some way, we overlooked having the uh, proper budgets for the salary increases that were given in the clerk master's office. This corrects that problem uh, by providing. They went ahead and gave the raises like they were supposed to, and they're $2,461 short. And we're bringing that over, we're asking that you transfer that money from development. Do I have a motion? Move for consideration. Second. Second. Discussion? So how do we how did we do this? We made a mistake. We me. Okay. 
So th this was monies that were due them after the allocations made last budget cycle. Yes. And, and we didn't come back reason, to you sooner to fix it. Okay. This is a problem I found. More discussion? I'll ask for a roll call vote. Lale? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Milton <coughs> Mitchell? Yes. Sample? Yes. Your motion passed. F2B, General County Soil Conservation <coughs> Communications, $576. Got a motion, got a second. Any discussion? Ask for roll call vote. Lale? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Melton? <clears throat> Mitchell? Yes. Sample? Yes. Motion passed. F2C, records man management, utilities, 1,273. Randy? This is for. Uh, our records department, excuse me, I'm trying to pull this thing up. Our utilities are running ahead of what we had budgeted and we're requesting that we transfer money to be able to meet the utility obligations for the rest of the year and we're bringing this, recommending this be brought over from development as well. And just for the record, the, the money we're talking about when we say development, that, it, that reflects the changes that we made in that department earlier, so it's the savings that we generated as a result of making those changes. So we're not transferring any money from fund <coughs> balance to cover any of this. Move for consideration. Second. I have a motion to second. Discussion? That's for roll call vote. Lale? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Milton Mitchell? Yes. Sample? Yes. Your motion passed. F2D. General County Trustee, computer upgrades, 26,000. This is an upgrade that, that uh, <coughs> we're bringing to you to establish a project budget so that the trustee's office will be able to go out and bid for their services to upgrade their system. Um, Scott and I have had numerous conversations about um, what we need to do for the general county versus what he needs to do in his office. There is an argument to be made that uh, we need, we could be on the same type of software, the same vendor to the point you were getting at, Mike, where it might leverage a better price for us. His installation and transition is going to be much more economical than ours. I would prefer to see all the other operating departments have as upgraded equipment and software as they can get before the general county makes an investment and those will all be known quantities at that time. In talking to the comptroller's office, we don't have to have the same operating software as any of our other fee offices, but if there's one that makes sense, it's the trustee's office in General County that ought to be on the same software. Um, <coughs> Scott's involved me in some of the conversations he's had with some of his vendors. I think there's some good solutions out there for him. Um, you're talking about licensing. Um, of about $15,000, could be less. Um, and then we propose $6,000 for PCs to update his hardware in his office. And then a server, if one of his solutions is like Phyllis's, where you have to have a server and you host that software internally within the department. I don't know that that'll be required, but I'd rather him have the budget set so that he's not limited when he goes out for bids. <coughs> Move for consideration. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Uh, this, uh, so as I understand your discussion, we're sort of, the, the purchase has not happened yet because the specs have not been let and the bids have not been processed and so forth. So basically we're setting a ceiling is that what we're doing with this well, that's one way to look at it he's he's looked at enough of the products he has multiple solutions some okay. of our other offices don't have multiple solutions okay in his case he does and based on those that he's talked to just to troubleshoot what their system offers this is within the range of of any of the the potentials out there that would serve his department well okay thank you what is the balance in the uh 
trustee data processing equipment plan. Scott doesn't have one of those. <laughs> That's the one fee office that doesn't have that capability. It's uh, so this is th the proposal for this twenty six thousand dollars. Does it come from development services also? It appears to be the. Am I reading this wrong? Is it not the same account number as we just approved for Phyllis? Yeah. You on? Um, you said that was. No, 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 no. Phyllis's person, where she's transitioning from part time to full time, is increased revenue to pay for that. No, I'm talking about her DP. <clears throat> her DP is she's taking that money from the reserve that she's got, where she's collected money. And is that not the same account number? Or Yeah, the 709, that's fund balance, right? No. Well, that was the answer when I asked earlier. The fund, ba fund balance is an equity account on the balance that. sheet. I understand that, and we had we had a number that was set aside that was, that was set aside in fund balance for DP for Phyllis's office. For Phyllis's. But Scott doesn't have one of those. Okay, but is this account number not the same as it should be? No, the the, the, the um, account number is for Scott's office, but the 709 is for data processing. Um, and, but the account number, the department, is different. In other words, to spend the money, we've got to put it in an appropriation account. So, yes, it is the same individual account, 709, for him to spend it once it's bid out and we know what he's going to buy. How much is in this <clears throat> development fund that we keep pulling out of here? Um, it was about 80000 in 80000 current year and about 140000 on an annualized basis. So this is just current year. And what's the... What is the source for that money? The cuts that we made in the development department. Codes. Oh, codes. When we were, okay. Whenever we put yeah. the savings in place, tried to admit and made the cuts that we did, that's the, the money in that department. We're using it for this. Okay. That way you're not increasing the total appropriation from the general county fund. You're only moving the money between two individual account appropriations. Okay. There, there was thir before. I don't have the total, but there was. Bef if you approve the twenty-six, <laughs> there's thirty-eight is the balance right now. Thirty-eight thousand is the balance right now. Would it not be prudent for Scott to have a DP fund if we're going to be doing this every few years? Yeah. You knew you'd get up here eventually. <laughs> <laughs> looks like you were prepared for <laughs> You wanted to see my happy face. <laughs> um, those DP funds, if I understand them correctly, were set up by state law, and the office that's providing that service has a little charge for that service, and that money's directed to their DP fund. Um, we don't really provide, you know, people come into my office and pay property tax, so we wouldn't want to charge them an extra dollar or something like that to go into to a DP fund. Whereas, sorry to use Phyllis's office as an example, but if you go record a deed or record some type of instrument, then the the law was set up to where they could charge, let's say, an extra two dollars um, for that recording fee, and that that is set aside in a in a uh, DP fund so that that office doesn't have to use property tax to fund um, that type uh, IT operation. And the fees that my office collects are, um, we get a trustee commission off of every, um, every dollar that we collect. So that money is um, not really set aside for any use except for general county use. That money goes into general fund. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any more discussion? I'll ask for a roll call vote. Lale. Yes. Lewis. Yes. Milton Mitchell. Yes. 
sample. Yes. <coughs> Motion passed. Thank you. F2E, general purpose school fund, uh, physical services training for new employees, 13,290. Troy's presenting that. Is Troy here? He's not. He, he had asked me and approached me about this. He is. He has a retirement that is uh, going to be effective June 30 in his payroll function. And given the nature and the importance of the payroll function, he'd asked me what I thought about bringing this to this body and asking for your permission to hire someone to work with the incumbent for about three months before they retire. I told him I thought that was wise. So that's what this is. And his method of paying is I think they, the estimate that they had for dependent insurance is not going to be as much as they had budgeted. And that's his proposal to pay for the balance of this year. So there's no maintenance of that issue? No. Uh, move for consideration. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. No. Open for discussion. Uh, so in essence, <clears throat> this is going to be to hire a part-time person, put them in place for training by the person currently carrying out the function as payroll clerk. Is that, do I have it? My understanding was they would go ahead and begin the process to hire the replacement and get them in here soon enough that they would have roughly 90 days to work with the incumbent. This is 90 days of payroll. That's what, That's what it, that was my understanding, yes. Well, you know, from, from the original presentation, I thought $13,000 worth of training is pretty good. Now, this, good this is actually the cost. Actually, to, the person on site, on staff, performing the function and learning. That's correct. I have a motion and a second and no more discussion. I'll ask for roll call vote. Lael? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Melton Mitchell? Yes. Sample. Yes. Motion passed. Okay, item G, discussion, we'll need <clears throat> action. Item one, Blount County Highway Department, so we need authorization to apply for a grant. Move for approval, sir. Second. Any discussion? These need to be roll call or voice. Roll call or voice <laughs> on these actions. Do we need to do voice or roll call? You can do a voice. Okay, there's no money on this, so let's just do voice. Bill, do we know if this will be a matching at all? I don't know what it's going to be. We, we've uh, sent off our paperwork for FEMA, or TEMA rather. This is for one of the major damages we had during the rains in January. I'm going to present this to the full body tomorrow night at the agenda committee, and I could hear somebody say, this should have went to budget first, so that's why it's here tonight. So you'll get an update on everything that's happened this last month of January on the damages we've had. So I'm just, I'm just looking for dollars is what I'm looking for. So. Bill, do you have any idea how much the state, is this the state grant you're looking at? No, I'm just, I'm looking, hold on, I'm looking. Tima, what we sent off to Tima right now, just on that one particular road, is over 600000 So we've had a total roughly of the month of January, a little over $800,000 of damage. So. And, and you don't know if there's like a finite amount no. that the no, state is not. saying, oh, we've got $80 million you can no. apply for a section. No. Okay. I don't know. Right now, Tima is compiling all the numbers statewide. So hopefully the, the damage statewide will open it up to where they can come in and offer some assistance. And the dollar amount, I don't have an idea yet, so thank you. <clears throat> Any more discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you, Bill. Report from Blount County Records Management, uh, Jackie. If, if I can while, while they're coming up, we brought this back because there were, at the last meeting, there were certain requests made of Jackie and, to bring back information to this body. That's what this report is. Depending on how you want to handle the report, we did not consider the grant that she has since received, and we actually have the money. 
but you've not taken any action on that pending this report. So it is item three on your agenda, depending on what, how you consider the report. So I've got them back to back for you. Mr. Chairman, I'm here in my capacity as uh, the chair of the uh, records committee and, and I agree with what Randy said. I think Jackie was here back in December and made the request that this body approve the, uh, the, the, uh, the grant that she, that, that has now been received. And I think that, and I can't read the committee's mind, but I think the committee was uh, wondering, can we not uh, do something to uh, elect, turn these records that are required by statute to be permanent records, turn them into electronic records uh, to save, I guess, space uh, and that kind of thing. Because this grant is, can be used only for the, uh, as I understand it, the, uh, to uh, maybe, I, I, maybe it's not engineering, but to, to do to, with an HVAC system with regard to trying to preserve, you know, make, the, make it a climate control type thing, see what comes to do for the space. So. And I think perhaps y'all were considering wondering, you know, do we, can we, can we save the space uh, by turning these, transferring these records into some kind of le to electronic records? And the short answer is yes, you can under certain circumstances. The state will let you do that. But in order to convert them to electronic records, you also have to microfilm them at this point in time. And she's compiled numbers, and, and John Heron, who's back there, was at our, at our meeting the other day, and, uh, and um, the numbers that uh, it would cost to do what's required now of us to convert those paper records into electronic records is astronomical. Um, she's got the specific numbers, uh, but, uh, and I'll let her speak to that, and John can explain a lot of the stuff to you. I think, it, you know, eventually it'd be something great to do, but it's, She's, I think, included in your packet, and it's outrageous. So, I mean, uh, so we're requesting, we think it would be prudent at this point in time to uh, approve the grant. And she can speak more to that uh, as far as the specifics because she's been tasked with doing that. Did I read your report correct, Jackie? Did it say that to make the conversion as described by Judge Brewer, $570,000 to do make the complete transition from paper to electronic. Is that, did I read that correctly? I've it's been hurriedly going well, over that. Well, that, <clears throat> what I've given you is two estimates from outside vendors and then an estimate on hiring employees to do it in-house would be the third option. Which okay. is the 570 if we hired, if we hired and that would, and that, and it would take. Takes several years. I broke it down. 530 on would be in-house hiring. The 702,000 would be contractual. That would be contracted out. Yes. Okay. Wow. And um, the vendors that I talked to, the two vendors that I've listed here, are local. Um, I think uh, located in Knoxville. I, I asked a third vendor for a quote and they didn't get it back to me. They're out of Alabama and they've got an office in Nashville. And until, unless and until the state law changes, that's the only way that we can convert these paper records that are required to be permanent records into electronic records. So to go from Pardon? paper the microfish, so to speak, and then that's got to be stored so that it'll back up the electronic, basically, is what. So you still have the, the backup requirement on all of this stuff. It's just moving from paper to film, yeah. then to that. And she's got, and John, and John, you still back there, John? Yeah. I hear him. We're going to get him he a stool to sit on now. He's the technical part of it, but it's just, it's, yeah, you, it's, it's, John, you might as well get a stool and move out here. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, the process is they have to scan, and then they can take those scan images and get microfilms. The, the big cost, though there is some cost associated with getting those into microfilm, the big cost is the actual scanning of the document and the indexing of the document. You, you can scan these things, but if you don't index, and you just end up with a big mess because you can't find anything. Right. And so there's... A, the, the indexing is very intensive because most of these records are handwritten. 
So you're not going to do any OCR on it. And it's not only that, but so many of them are strange shapes. They're books that are, I forget, 19 by 22 or, or something like that. So you, you can't just get your scanner you use for your 8.5 by 11 paper and run it through it. They have to have specialized equipment or they've got to, you know, destroy the book. Well, the state won't let you destroy the book until you got it scanned and microfilmed. So you're kind of a catch-22 situation at that point in time. Are there, any, are there any grant monies out there for these kinds of activities? I, there are some grants out there, but uh, the ones that I've seen are through National Endowment of Humanities and probably NHPRC. And those are kind of related to archival type records. Um, those are the ones that I'm more familiar with. And uh, I did talk to John about writing a grant before, but some of the grants are like, they want you to come up with a, I guess it's like a prototype for other counties to, or, you know, to pattern theirs after. So there's, they're real, you know, they're real technical and real in depth. And there's requirements that they require those records to be online. And uh, there would be a lot of work involved if you were to use that as, as your backup for court records, for instance. You know, if they had any uh, social security numbers, any confidential information would have to be redacted out of them wow. and that kind of thing. So it's not as, you know, it's a, it's, I don't know how to explain it. We've just got a lot of records that are a lot of different sizes, like John said, and a lot of different requirements on keeping those records, you know, on which ones would be confidential and which ones weren't. You could do some of that with the, you know, um, security and a password maybe and not make some of those available. But in those grants, some of those grants require them to be available to the public. That one in particular that I've, I've read. Because I'm always looking for money and ways of saving the county money. And I'm really interested in doing everything I can, you know, for my department to better my department. But I don't know. I mean, if, you, if you've seen where, where the records are, in fact, every record there is, is a permanent record. And if you've seen, been out there and seen what we've got, it's just unbelievable it's what, what's going to have to happen to, to, get, to, get, to get them electronically uh, pre-produced. And, and, and the state's requirement is what it is, and there's nothing we can, can do about it. Yeah, and the only reason that we talked about it last time is I worry 10 years from now what that same oh, room is going to look agree. like. I mean, it may be three or four or five times that space, and eventually we're going to run out. If, if we are able to get the grant for me to move in the space and you all approve it, I feel like I can be more efficient at my job because I would have them all in one place and I could, you know, see for one thing, have lighting <laughs> whenever I'm trying to go through them and, you know, get out the ones that are ready to destroy. But I, I put together some numbers and we've uh, destroyed about 136 boxes this year that had met the retention schedule. And uh, the ones that I've listed on here are the, the ones that I've estimated, I've tried to estimate the permanent records. And uh, then we had some transferred in and I put those in the hall because I didn't have any room. I used a holding area that I, I usually use when I bring records in and then park them there until I put them on the shelf. 
uh, but we had about a hundred and probably about 160 come in and then about 130 books I made made room for um, when Steve Ogle and Roy Crawford's office switched. So are we able to, or, I mean, are we destroying them? We're, destro as we're destroying as what we can as, fa as fast as we can. It, it takes the committee's approval to, to destroy things and it's, it, she brings us, she, every time we meet there's a list. She's not hoarding anything. Anything that has met the retention date, we get rid of it. And there's, there's, there's some th records that just they, they, they require you like for some like payroll records, something how far back we have. Seventy years on certain payroll records. Yeah, for, you know, there's no so. law to some of it, but yeah. that's just what the statutes. Are we able? Are we getting rid of less than we're bringing in on an annual basis? Still yes. I mean, we're still yeah, we're creating a lot of court records. And when they built the Justice Center, they didn't really plan for space. And um, if you've ever been over there, they don't have a lot of storage space. And there's about a thousand boxes that Tom Hatcher's office has got in the old health department. I went down there and counted them because. When they run out of room there, they're going to want to send those to me also. You've got how, how many you got at Hubbard right now? How many boxes? I've got about 3,074 boxes at Hubbard. And how many at Everett? And <laughs> no, I'm sorry, that's Everett. And then at Hubbard, I've got about, uh, I'm getting confused. There's, there's about 6,000 cubic feet of boxes. And I broke those down um, into which would be quicker to scan for the vendors, and that was the 3,000 number. My question, let me ask, can I ask just a question? You're talking boxes, I'm talking square footage. Okay. We, um, uh, at Hubbard, between Hubbard and, and Everett Basement, we've got, what, 10,000 square feet? We've got uh, 2,600 at Everett and about 4,000 at Hubbard okay. already. And, the, and then how many square feet do you see at the, that Tommy's office has in those 1,000 boxes? I don't know. I didn't measure the square feet. I just counted boxes. My question, Jackie, is we're talking 10,000 square feet at the op center. That's what you're, you're right, asking for. Right, that's what I requested. <laughs> is it, is it, are we not going to out, have outgrown it before we get in it? I mean, that's, it, it seems to me like we're well, not leaving ourselves any kind of growth, any room for growth there. If, if over there, there's a big rectangle room. I don't have walls to go around. I can do, you know, I think we can go up wall to wall. More than what we, we, than what we got. I mean, the, you know, <clears throat> footage, square footage is one thing, but I think there's it's, it's, so many feet you can go It's up. almost I mean, more a, cubic feet. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, eventually we're going to run out of room. But I mean, I mean, if you if you if you historically this office is slowly every place they've been has run out of room. I mean, and there's just just the nature of the beast. Isn't it? And are we scanning now as much documents yes. as we can going forward? We are. Um, give, us, give us two or three more people. We can. Get more <laughs> <laughs> we scanned uh, about forty something county commission minute books for Roy's office in 2010 and 11. And um, I tried to get a count on how much we scanned this year and we, we averaged about 30,000 images per year. Now that's two person office. We do the transfers, we do the shredding, we do the scanning, we we authorize destruction. Um, we do a lot of, of different functions other than scanning, but we're always scanning too. Do all of these records, do you have to be able to put your hands on them at a moment, moment's notice? I mean, the ones that are in the basement at Everett and the ones that are there in the old health department building, are, uh, uh, what, uh, 
Are, are these there because they, you have to be able to put your hands on them at a moment's notice? or? It, it, you know, there's right. storage facilities out here that uh, with storage buildings in the industrial park. It, it, or is there not anything that we could just package up and put actually in a storage unit somewhere? Well, we'd have to be able to access those within, um, I think, seven business days. You've got to, um, if someone comes in and requests the record, then you've got um, to comply or let them know when uh, you will have them back and why, you know, it's taking longer. Like if it's a large request and it's going to take more time, then you've got to answer them back and, you know, let them know. I understand the point. There may be some of these things will never ever be touched by another human being as long as they're there, but there's nothing we, we've got to happen in case <coughs> something happens. <coughs> Yeah, and I've never been concerned about the documents we have to keep, you know, that we have to have a hard copy of. You know, it's, for me, it's always been what documents do we have in hard copy that doesn't have to be in hard copy that we can transfer over. Well, again, none of them have to be, but we've got to do all this other to get them to there. We've got to yeah, we scan them, like got to scan them and, make, and microfilm them. And, and in, in my opinion, I would rather scan the permanent records because they're usually the more important record. The temporary records, if you're scanning those, you might be able to get rid of those in five to seven years. And, uh, you know, the permanent records, then you, if you had a fire or something like that, you couldn't <coughs> recreate them. And we, how many scanners do we have? In my office, I've got um, a Canon DR5060 that scans and microfilms. It's an automatic feed. And then I've got a Fujitsu that's a flatbed scanner for the older court records that you can lift the lid and scan. And I've got a like a three-in-one fax scanner at my desk that I, I do a lot of back scanning on. And we had a book scanner, but it's on the blink right now. <laughs> it's an older book scanner that Tom Hatcher's office loaned us. And uh, I've started uh, a new scanning project with the Nikon camera that I'm scanning the book images with now. It's a better image than the, the book scanner. I mean, is our, do you think our equipment is good, bad, indifferent? I mean, what, the, how much? The Canon is older, but it's, it serves its purpose, and I think it's doing a good job because you can scan and back it up to microfilm. And I think that we're doing about all we can, you know, with the staff that I've got. I get a part-time person usually through the senior program, but um, then you, in scanning, you've got to have time to go back and do quality control checks on your indexing and your scans and make sure they're, they're good. And that's the concern about having a third party come in and do it because mm -hmm. they're just, you know, they're getting it done just as quick as they can and the quality, the quality control, that's a big issue. I mean, there's no point in doing it and, and, and do you guys have a technology budget at all or a fund? No. no. Um, the we didn't have law, enough money to pay our electric bill. <laughs> the law that uh, Phyllis was talking about, we, under the state law, we could ask for that fee, but we've, we've never come back and, and asked to charge a records fee. Um, and, I, and I guess the question is, if we had better equipment, could we, I mean, could we do, could we scan at a faster rate? If we had somebody to operate them, okay. <laughs> that, That's my question. Is it, is it a, a technology issue or is it a people issue or is it both? Well, it could, it probably both because if I had another person, I'd need a better computer to put, put them on, you know. 
One of my problems is two of our computers are really old, and uh, we're scanning into the LaserFish system, and the server that we're using is at the Justice Center. So that's another thing about distance and, and you know, being connected to the courthouse because we're on a computer system that is not very fast and we're connected to people upstairs and our system's down a lot. But if we were able to move to the operations center, then we would be with other county offices and I think our system would operate faster because they've got the, I believe they've got fiber optic yeah. out there. Okay. Thanks. Any more discussion? Any more questions? Okay, I'll ask for a voice vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Judge. What you did is just affirm the report. On the, on, you now have an item on the grant. On the grant itself, we have already received the five thousand dollar grant, and we have done nothing with it. The proposed amendment here is, depending on the outcome of the report, if you were satisfied with the report, then. Are you willing now to appropriate the five thousand dollar grant that we've received? That'd be item or not? three. Yes, item G three. Do I hear a motion to approve the grant? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Voice vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Number four, interlocal agreement for mm -hmm. Blunt County with the City of Maryville and City of Alcoa regarding Blunt County Animal Center. Randy. Um, Item G4, the first page of that is a little analysis that we've done. The, as I understand it, I kind of inherited that first column. The Animal Center prepared estimates based on the volume of animal collection in each jurisdiction, what would be the relationship or what if the Animal Center were to do all of it in the county, including the municipalities, what would the increased cost be to the Animal Center? That's the first column. If you were doing it for everybody in the county, it was roughly $98,000. Well, the reality is everybody does it a little bit differently. The proposal you have in front of you is for Maryville and Alcoa only. The proposals are that they would still <clears throat> collect animals, they would still enforce their own ordinances, but they would then bring them to the animal center and they would become, the animal center then would be custodians of those animals and they would adhere to the existing policies and procedures of the animal center. If you were to approve this, the estimated annual cost to Maryville is $66,000. Well, that would be revenue to Blount County. The estimated cost for Alcoa would be $17,250. That would be revenue to the Animal Center. Those are just annualized estimates. The, when we met with Maryville, they said, well, we want to make sure that we don't get hit with a surcharge later on for capital, a capital call. A piece of equipment's worn out. We don't want to have to come back later on. So what we did is roughed out what we thought the depreciation was of the equipment that was over there. Not vehicle, well, yeah, it includes some vehicle. But we estimated that to be about $12,000 a year, and all I did was take a pro rate of share of that $12,000 and assessed it to each jurisdiction. So in the case of Maribel, if they were to agree to this interlocal agreement, you should expect to get $74,000 in change from them a year. 66 of that would go to operations, 8,000 of it we would reserve on the balance sheet so that if a piece of equipment needed to be replaced, we would have the money available to replace the equipment. That's the concept behind it. The only reason you're getting Maryville and Alcoa now is because they still want to maintain the enforcement of their own ordinances, excuse me, and then they would bring those animals to the animal center. The other jurisdictions would be a little bit different from that, and we're not bringing those to you now. 
Move to Motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? The question, <clears throat> as I read over this, I see uh, for capital costs exceeding 15% of the previous year's operating payment, how does that impact those numbers you just gave us? There? Well, they basically capped it, and I've not gotten feedback from them. They've asked me a couple of questions yeah. on Friday, and I've not gotten back to them. But so they so have this same information. The addendum was actually drawn up prior to us doing this calculation for them. Okay, so so they not they have not responded to your calculation or your estimates of No, they've proposed questions to me, and I've just not gotten back to them since okay. Friday. Okay, so that's still hanging up in the air. But we're going to be in the ballpark. The, the issue that they've asked me is they want to make sure both jurisdictions don't want to pay a disproportionate share of capital or operating. And I've already advised them that the annual operating budget of the animal center is around $330,000, I think, something like that. This would be additional costs over and above for the animal center. So these communities need to pay their pro rate of share. And, and basically then, Blunt County would be absorbing the cost of housing these animals, not capturing nor maintaining the personnel to do the execution of the city ordinances. That's correct. Yeah, and you might add that once they bring their animals to Blunt County, they become our animals, which means if we turn We may not want them, though. Uh, <laughs> and that means we got to get rid of them and take care right, of them. Right, and we make money on them. Well, I don't know That's about making we, money. Well, well, we have been. Okay. To the tune of about $10,000 a month on what we've done so far. And is but, this agreement reviewed annually? Yes. I mean, it, it becomes basically a part of the budget process that each jurisdiction would consider. But we sign a new agreement every yes. year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So by it becoming part of the budget process, does that mean that that's why you see the February seven. dates in there that they get us the information in February right. and we get them the information okay, in February. Okay, and does that mean that there's some urgency in us dealing with this right now? Well, I mean, we both of them have an interest in entering into the contract. We have, uh, Steve called me and asked me to if I would be able to come over and explain it to the advisory board, which I've done. They voted on it and it's before you here so that if the commission, uh, Commissions at least had a committee that vetted it before it was considered on the agenda. Would they want to? So, so if it leaves here and goes <clears throat> to the agenda committee, then it will be for consideration of adopting and going forward with. And this is a draft agreement. This is not the final agreement. And there's yeah. some negotiation to be. Yeah. Maribel may sign a contract for $72,000. If, if they present a case that says they're paying a disproportionate, I'm just making up examples now. But if they said, well, we don't think that we, all of us as a jurisdiction ought to pay for all the capital, <coughs> then, yeah, you know, that may be $4,000 or $5,000. But the gist, there will be de minimis changes, not substantive changes. Well, back when we contracted with Maryville seems like our cost is over three hundred thousand dollars for the disposal of our animals, or for them to handle ours. And this has been six, maybe six years ago. I, think, I wasn't on the commission then. That was between two thousand. It was two thousand six. So yeah. I'm not it, sure. It was actually around two hundred and fifty thousand, and with that cost, you also got animal control. They actually they, they came in. The they had the officers. Yeah, they, they, the they, pay, they did the whole county. Okay, I was trying to recall all the, that information. The logic was if Blount County was willing to do it, then we'd bring it to the commission first. And then both cities then would have to approve it, make sure that they wanted to do it as well. But they have both indicated to us that they want to do it, so we're just taking well, this first step. Just, just for the sake of whatever, what would happen if we agree to go forward with this? And then after we get into the process, uh, uh, the city's decided, well, we're not going to pay personnel anymore since you all are taking animals anyway. You can absorb the cost of that. Would that leave the county holding the entire bag of cost for all of this? 
Well, but your volumes are going to decrease. Part of my concern, the reason that I feel pretty comfortable with this capital allocation is with the increased volumes, you're going to accelerate the use on that equipment oh, over yeah. there. Oh, yeah. I understand that part of it. What I'm looking at is the long-term impact of, of this process because uh, uh, this is one of those things that's it's kind of a, you know, there's a lot of, of problems with this out there in terms of you're maintaining a service that, although needed, you know, it's not one that's very popular in a lot of places because they, everybody's going, okay, here we're paying for dogs and animals and not other issues, you know, other areas that may be more important. Uh, and I'm looking at the long-term impact on the county because if suddenly they go out of the business and we have been doing business with them along that line, does that drop us immediately into carrying the whole ball? instead of sharing the cost with, with they, them? I, mean, I, I don't know how they could hold us responsible for doing that. I mean, that, if I mean, they decided what they, not what to. What they've well, told well, us is a, they still the want there. to they enforce see. their own ordinances. Yeah, they've got their own Yeah, they've got their own ordinances, okay. their own now, laws. They can, they can suddenly, I mean, they can put ordinances in, they can take them out. If they have no particular ordinances, does that drop Correct. all the responsibility? Correct. You know, we've got, you know, if you look at state law, for example, education, the county is actually responsible for conducting the right. education process in this county for everybody. Right. And that's one of those things that bounces back and forth and and creates all kinds of issues. Maryville and Alcoa exist only by special act. Sure. Okay. And so in essence, if they drop out of the animal control business, does that automatically default everything? Well, from my prior counties? experience, I can tell you that their ordinances are probably more stringent than the state law. I think what he's asking, though, Randy, is by, by just sort of like with the school system, if they drop out of it, does it automatically fall back on us by statute? It and and it problem. doesn't. And that's the reason that we don't provide animal control for Rockford, Friendsville, or Louisville. We don't go into their cities right. and provide animal control. But now each one of those exists by special act, correct? As a city. As a city. They're incorporated mm -hmm. cities. And they are incorporated and they have. That's why they have their own governing body, sure. uh, their commissions, their whatever each one of those uh, things are, and that allows them to exist, and that also allows them to take responsibilities, not necessarily requires them to, but they can voluntarily take responsibility. For example, City of Friendsville right now is debating whether or not they want to get into law enforcement and are trying, you know, <laughs> working with the sheriff in terms of do we do we do our own or do we contract or do we require that the sheriff do that? And, and by statute, I would imagine that the sheriff would be responsible for law enforcement. Should Maryville go out of business, Rockford, Alcoa, whatever. Yeah, but I think it's a whole different, I think you're looking at two, you're not comparing apples to apples. That, well, there's no I, law that, that says we question. have to provide, we have to provide it in Blount County, but not in incorporated cities. Okay. But my question is, is that exactly? Do we, will it, by, can we guarantee that that won't automatically be dumped back to us to carry the full thing? Because uh, they are incorporated, but they basically kind of pick and choose which services they want to provide, if you really look at it. And the county has, there are certain statutes that are overriding, and I know there's probably precedents and, and there's probably been cases on this, I'm not familiar with them, won't make any, you know, any bones about it. But, you know, I just have that concern because that becomes a very legitimate budgetary concern on down the road. Because suddenly that full cost of maintaining animal control throughout the county, as would maintaining education throughout the county, as would maintaining law enforcement throughout the county, you know, would be a, a, a major issue. And just something I'd like to see some way to safeguard or understand. That's a fair point. The, the okay. term is, we've been working on this thing for a while, but the term of this proposed agreement expires June 30, so that's one thing it probably will change. Mm -hmm. uh, the second provision under uh, number 10 is the termination. You, either party can terminate the agreement, but they've got to give six months notice. But can Blunt County terminate if they... Either, either party, party can terminate. Can terminate. Okay, <clears throat> but again, my question is, and I may be hammering a point that's probably not even yeah. worth, but um, if they no longer provide that service, can we actually 
not have it drop back. I mean, we can't terminate our responsibility as a county. The, the well, point the, is, is the, is animal. The, you follow where I'm trying yeah. to go there? But the, I, the question is, I don't think animal control under the state statute is a required service like education and law enforcement. Well, that's, that would be something that we might need to look at and make sure of clarification on where we stand as this process goes forward. If it I was, just don't want to see, you know, and I may be, this is my last meeting on the budget committee. And so it's going to be somebody else's problem to wrestle out on down the road. But, but I do have a concern across the board on you know, for what we're actually getting ourselves into, you know, um, and, and I, I don't have any major anti or pro animal control or anything else. I just want to look at the long term process and make sure we don't get into something that's going to cost us on down the road. And uh, because that that's monies that it's really it's a service. And quite frankly, the only negative thing I'd have to say is that years ago, we didn't have problems with animal control. Citizens took care of their own animals one way or the other. And, that, and every time you abrogate something that they really ought to be doing, it ends up costing them money. And, and it's all, you know, nobody worried about animal control. You took care of your own. That doesn't happen anymore. So we've let people off the hook basically. But anyway, that's personal feeling. I just, I just, have, a, I just have a real issue until I fully understand this and I need to do some more study and I guess I'll get my opportunity from agenda and full commission to look at it as it goes forward or if it goes forward. I'd so, like, anyway, I'd like at least Randy to look at that. So is the question that I've written it down is if the city drops animal control, is the county obligated to pick it up? That's, is that the question? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, one, that's one of the questions. <clears throat> yeah. And that'd be, the, that, to me, that'd be the question regardless of this agreement. I, I, yeah, I would say, I, I, I dare that. say that if we were required to do animal control by state statute, none of, Maryland and Alcoa wouldn't have got into it. We would have been doing it for them. Okay. Exactly. Well, and, and I, but I, I would like, I'll, I, I can't really definitively, I don't feel comfortable making a statement one with the, I'd just like to know for sure by statute or not. And that's the reason I dropped that question forward. Any other discussion? Okay, to a voice vote on passing this on to the agenda committee, mission. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes aye. have it. Put me as opposed because I'm not, okay. I'm not ready to do that yet oh, because I, of that question. Sure Okay, grant procedures and grant workshops, Randy. Uh, this was the procedures we brought to you last month that didn't ask you for any action on. And after we had solicited input from all the departments and official and the other elected office holders, and we wanted you to at least have a month to look at it. And we're bringing it back to see if you're willing to support it now and put it into effect as policy. This be passed forward as information only to the agenda committee for consideration at a later time before we make it a policy. Is that what you're saying? Well, my assumption was that commission would have to prove the policy as well. Okay, so, so they'll, they'll have come as a recommendation from right. this body if you're in favor of it. Okay, I, I would move that it go forward to the agenda committee. Thank you. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. H, the finance report is information only. I, financial wait, report. Wait a second, Mayor. If, um, I just want to draw to your attention that at, in accordance with our schedule, the March 25th budget workshop that we have set aside, we are proposing that that be held at the Justice Center since most all those people that will be presenting to you work in that building or the building next door to that building. And we just thought it'd be more convenient to meet there for everybody. We, will, we have the jury pool room reserved, which is more than adequate accommodations to hold uh, the size <clears throat> crowd we would have. And it's right off the main hallway of the building too. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. Is that on the 
The budget amendment guidelines, do you have anything on that, Randy? I'm sorry? The, the amendment guidelines, do you have anything you want to say on that? Previously, when we handed out the guidelines that are on H2, um, just for clarification, we've gotten some feedback from some of the departments. Uh, we are operating under the 1957 Act and the 1993 Local Option Act. And when you lay the local option over it, we've been operating, some people have been operating as if we'd never gotten under the 93 Local Option Act. Um, we caught, Dana caught that on the, the instructions that we sent out to the departments. We have sent, this is the revised change, Dana, is that correct? And we have changed that. It's the section that calls, requires department manager and county mayor signature or school board approval only with a copy to the budget committee. And that is any transfer involving a salary and or benefit lines as long as you're not increasing the bottom line of that department's budget under state law, TCA 512-213-A1, the manager that's recommending it or office holder and the mayor can sign off on that or the school board and it doesn't have to come to you for action, it comes to you for information. And then all transfers between budget lines, 300 through 799 in the same account number would come to you as information, you wouldn't have to act on it. Is that correct? That's the only change that we're proposing <coughs> to make. And those are the 93 local option that make it that way. We have confirmed that with uh, both the Comptroller's Office and with CTAS to make sure that we're in compliance. And this should get everybody on the same line. We have been bringing things to you that weren't required to bring for you for you to act on, but it was required to present to you. Like any any questions? questions on that? Okay. Items, financial reports, report of use of uses of fund balance. Randy, you want to speak on that? We just changed that. That's something, a, a suggestion that Dana made that I think is good, that previously we we consolidated a lot of this on basically two or three pages. We want to make clear to you that the fund balances, regardless of fund, are the fund balances that were audited as of June 30, 2012. And then the activity that's listed by date, and then a description of what that activity was, are changes that impact fund balance. You could not say that fund balance, for example, on the general county right now is 8.3 million minus 396. That would not be an accurate statement because it doesn't count the revenues that are coming in and the expenses that are going out. But what we are saying is, as long as we stay within budget, you shouldn't see any changes to fund balance other than the activity that you've already voted on. Any questions on that? Monthly reports, information only, nothing that. on that. I do have a couple items on J. Okay. Input on items not on the agenda. You want to go ahead, Randy? Sure. Um, I was asked previously by a commissioner if we were going to include our statistical tables on our website. At that time, we did not have them on there because of the staff change. We'd kind of gotten behind in our department. Those are now on our website. So you have the audit on the website as well as the statistical tables on the website. Uh, we've had different people call and ask us, financial analysts and what have you. So those are now posted on our website. Uh, the second item is I was invited to the school board's budget workshop last Thursday afternoon prior to their um, their regular scheduled meeting and I think I should report to you that they informed, the staff informed the school board that at this time unless there is a major increase in sales tax or property tax which I don't foresee, we will not meet the maintenance of effort test for schools as of right now. And I just wanted to bring that to your attention now and I told Trump, well, you're right on cue. <laughs> um, and I told Troy after that meeting and I thought I ought to at least make you aware of that so that 
you'd have time to think about what you might want to do or, or whatever later on. I literally just announced. Troy, do you want to, you have anything that you'd like to add to that? I'm not sure what all he I just made the statement that I'd been invited to your all's workshop yeah. in that you had informed the, the board that at this point it looked like they would we would not meet the maintenance of effort test. He also told us you had a balanced budget. <laughs> he told you what? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Come on. But, it, it, how much will we be short in maintenance of effort? Well, I, I brought a sheet with me and I, I, I left my glasses. I'm, I apologize for being late. 2.5, um, I help you? <laughs> <laughs> we had a negotiation session with the BCA that went longer than I thought. There, there's two parts to the maintenance of effort test. The first part is based on this year. It looks at what we budgeted for local revenues this year, local revenues being primarily two things, property tax and sales tax. Let's just talk about those two. It says that act, my actual revenues this year have to equal or exceed what we budgeted. And they're going to be, we're going to be short. Uh, right now, estimated around $2 million between those two accounts and a couple other local revenues. That's a big number, yeah. That's a big number. That's this year? That's this year. And what the, the state guidance says when you fail that test, one of two things has to happen. Either legislative body makes up that two million, for example, in the given year, finds additional local revenues and transfers it to the school fund. Or if that doesn't happen, then we'll be required to set up a reserve. They call it a BEP reserve, but they'll require us to reserve and set aside $2 million of our fund balance going into next year. So that's the one. And we've done, we've done in the that. past, we've done both. Uh, the last time, I think, was three years ago, and the commission transferred, I forget the amount, it was closer to 800000 or so to the school department to, to meet that test in the current year. The second test takes a look at, again, what we're budgeting this year for those two things, local revenues, and says what we budget next year in 13-14 for sales tax and property tax has to equal or exceed that. And that's the one that most of you are more common that you, you can't budget less next year than we budgeted this year. Well, because of the, such a significant shortfall right now this year, I can't easily just budget sales tax again what we're budgeting this year. We're not even hitting it this year. So I can't budget that again next year knowing that we're not even close to that. Same for property tax, and that's primarily because of the value of the penny. Now, I don't know what the value of the penny will be. I think that comes next month, uh, Mr. Mayor. but. Uh, that that might change a little bit. That figure, just based on projections now, this, this is not firm, and making an, an adjustment for pupil ADM decrease is about a million three. Now what that, to, to fix that test, Somehow I got to come up with, or we got to come up with an additional 1.3 million in local revenues in our budget for next year. If we don't, when I ask the question of someone at the State Department, it says, well, we won't approve your budget. And that's the only answer I get. And I don't think that's ever happened, at least not since I've been here. <clears throat> And I've asked the state if it's happened somewhere else and they've not got back to me yet. Does that make sense? The projections you had, um, of course, obviously based upon the value of the penny and, and also based upon the estimated collection of sales tax. 
which, what are the numbers per category that we fell short on? Did it come in terms of, uh, uh, I mean, like the X number of dollars supposedly coming from property tax? And then what, where were we, how much is the difference between what was supposed to be, you know, when we budgeted based on the $310,000 per penny versus the $304,000 that right. turned out to be? So what was the amount that was due? In, in that particular in line that item, just for property tax, local property tax, current year property tax, I'm right. sorry. Um, that, that amount that I've estimated is about $460,000 short in that account. So, so the main culprit in this is the shortfall in sales tax revenue, which if well, you said it was like two point something million, then there's there's three culprits. One is the local property tax. Right. Two is about a million two in sales tax. That's the shortfall in sales tax. And the third is is in a, an account called trustees collections prior year. Now that's a little bit of a new one yeah, on us recently. Um, that's about four hundred ninety thousand right now. So as, as a commission, allotting funding for, your, for the schools and so forth, are we responsible for the full amount or are we responsible for the shortfall in property tax? Because the sales tax obviously is not something we can control. So, but, and then the, the trustees shortfall is you. Well, it's, it's not the trustee's office per se. It's, they collect prior year uh, what's, delinquent, tax. delinquent taxes. Is oh, what delinquent taxes. Delinquent taxes okay. is okay. more okay. a more appropriate. Okay. I got you. I got you. I thought you were talking about their commission. No, no, no. It, I should, it's, it's the account name, but it's delinquent taxes are not coming in the way where we had budgeted. Okay. Uh, uh, and to answer the question, I think, is I, I don't know. I understand what you're saying about sales tax. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the state, uh, you know, gives a, a pass on that or not. I don't know. And uh, I think you also asked if you make up some of it. And I'm making an assumption here. I guess you could make up some, and then the rest would be required a reserve to set up. Okay. Either way, that's that's neither. Doesn't it's not very helpful to either one of us. In that case, yeah. uh, now most of the time, you know, we we deal with best guess estimations on this because uh, it's based upon a formula, especially for the value of the penny. They they look at whatever mm -hmm. expected and all this, and that's mm -hmm. that's kind of determined by you know. And so then we set our budget, the number of pennies you need in order to fulfill the actual dollar amount that you should get from us. Right. So what actually is the dollar amount you should have received versus what you are going to receive? In total for local revenues yeah. based on this. Yeah, it'd be too much to ask to break it down according to all those categories, but just, just the total. The total based on the test that we have to include is Budgeted, we budgeted 33.4 million this year. Okay. And we're, I'm projecting that we'll bring in 31.2, which is a 2.2 million so dollar difference. differential that you, okay. And then of course the three categories that you broke down in between are making those, making up that two point. The, the majority of that, yes. Okay. Has there been any adjustment for um, enrollment figures, for example, membership figures. You made that adjustment. Is that included in there? Because I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was under the impression that enrollment had gone down. It's gone state. down. It's gone down some, and and the worksheet doesn't make an adjustment for that based on the current year, the first test. Right. It does on the second one. And the, the figure I gave you for the second one, meeting next year's maintenance of effort test, the shortfall being 1.3 million, takes mm -hmm. into account uh, the uh, 
about a hundred student drop in ADM. I took it, that's part of the formula. So we did put that in there. Now, a couple of years ago, there, and you're gonna have to help me because I'm muddling a little bit here. <clears throat> Wasn't there a, a, a state reprieve kind of pass through that allowed for a maintenance of the BEP funds even though enrollment dropped? and so forth, what didn't, weren't, weren't you all able to receive excess funds that would, that were in excess of your enrollment request? I, I, I think you the state delayed by a year or two years. Yes. Chopping you off. <clears throat> they, they call that stability. Stability, yeah, that was and the And the state. It's a year, I think. I think it's a year, yeah. Yeah. So. And the state, what they did was, in for one year, yeah, you only if our it. numbers go down, they'll hold us at the same level of revenue we got the year before for a year. Okay, but yes. only for a year. Yeah, right. And then the following year, if your numbers are still down, you get whatever it calculates. So you go from immediately from the stability thing, and the second year they go to. That's almost like taking a double chop, though, when it when the foot finally hits, yes. so to speak, you kind of get hit twice right there mm -hmm. at once. Okay. But only if enrollment stays down, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So projected over the last five years, has enrollment gone down each year? Um, I, have, I wish I'd have brought a worksheet. I, I know for the last three or four years, and, I, and it varies about how much. There was one year in there where it, I think it was down 10, but the other years were down a little bit more than that. So yeah, so overall, there's a trend. Okay. Yes. That's, that was sort of what I had been led to believe. It's, uh, in, in the process, I mean, it's, sometimes it's hard to determine exactly, you know, and, and sometimes it helps to understand how each school or each area is maintaining its enrollment level and, mm -hmm. and so forth. Somewhere down the line, of course, I, I'll not be on, on the committee after this night, but is that possible that we could, you could make that information available to us? Sure. Across the board, you know, mm -hmm. by school, yes. break down as to how the enrollment figures are looking in there. Mm -hmm. That would maybe be helpful in looking on down the road and dealing with some of these issues. Absolutely. And Troy, have we made any determination or looked at any projections about what may happen to enrollment with the new school? What new, new school? STEM school. The STEM school. Oh, um, very good question, but no. We, we've talked about it, but I don't, well, nobody's tried to make an attempt at what that would do. I don't know. You're talking about that the Clayton mm -hmm. Bradley school? Yeah. I don't know. Because that will obviously affect us to could. some degree. It could, yes. Especially if the waiver, if the voucher thing comes into impact. And I know that I don't, I, well, I probably shouldn't even speak to pending legislation in the state. I don't know what the state's going to do. I've heard talk about voucher programs and all that kind of stuff. See, that, that could really throw a kink in this, trying mm -hmm. to sit down and figure it out when you start looking at funding on a per pupil basis because the, you know, those, those guys are going to go and they're going to take with them whatever is projected as their per person Money's share. with it, yeah. So, you yeah. know, the more we give, the more they take with them mm -hmm. so in that sense. So, the, the only we other don't know how that's going to come out when, we to, when it shakes out at the bottom of the stack. That's just been talked about. The only other thing I wanted to share with you that I, I gleaned from the meeting is a, a desire by the school board to have a joint meeting with the commission. I'm not doing anything more than just reporting that to you. This sounds like a problem that's going to take both bodies getting together on to make it come out with something. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Just personal observation, if we're still on items, not on the agenda. Uh, Commissioner Melton is not here tonight due to some health issues and stuff, and, and uh, 
this would also be his last meeting on the budget committee prior, I mean, if there is approval. Thank you, Troy. Tomorrow, and I'd just like to say I appreciate working with you guys over the last three years, and you all are very patient with me when I ask dumb questions and stuff, and, and, uh, and I also would like to express my appreciation to Commissioner Melton, who has done this for over 12 years, and uh, I appreciate his sharing his information and stuff to us, so good luck in the future. Thank you. Thank you for your service, Holden, to this budget committee. I know it's it's one of those committees that uh, takes a whole lot of work when you're on it. Is there any other items not on the agenda, Linda? Anyone else? Okay. I'd just like to make a couple of comments because I know uh, you talked a lot about the budget tonight and you'll be working on the new budget for the new year and about the schools. Now we heard today that there's 100 less students in the school and we know the STEM school is gonna take more away. We know we already had some schools with empty classrooms. Uh, we're cutting more and more kids because more and more families are going toward homeschooling, which I think is a great decision. But it may get to a point where we can actually close one of our older schools, the smaller schools. And I think this has to be taken into consideration. You know, we, we've seen the schools, um, the superintendent of schools take a 4% increase when they're talking about being short of money. We saw them get a new vehicle. We see in the paper, and I put a notice into each one of the commissioner's mailboxes about them uh, having coaches, um, an unbelievable amount of coaches, and yet they talk about being short of uh, money for technology and for school books. And I think if you talk to people in the community, they're getting more and more upset about where this money is being spent and then being told we don't have money to educate the kids. Also, when it comes to uh, talk with, about the sales tax, I think the people sent you a message that they didn't want more taxes. And right now we're talking about a possible large increase in taxes. Uh, the newspaper, if you keep track of different comments from different uh, utility companies, Recently, uh, the electric company said there's less usage of electric. That's because people are conserving, because they can't afford to pay big bills. So what do they turn around and do? They up the cost of electricity. So you, get, you pay more, even though you're using less because you're conserving. I just met this last uh, week with the water board, South Blunt Utility, and they had the comment as well that they have to up um, the cost, which they didn't do it by upping the cost. They took away all the water you get with your minimum bill. You used to get 2,000 gallons of water with a minimum bill. Now you get not one drop of water. You pay it a, 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 a bill and then you pay for every gallon of water you use on top of that. And I said, well, you know, what is the reasoning for that? And they said, well, there's less usage. Well, less usage is because people are using less because they can't afford the big bills. People in this community are trying to conserve. And the same thing with the sales tax when they didn't want to pass that. They said, we can't afford more taxes. We don't want more taxes. We want cuts. You will now be meeting with all the department heads, and I hope you'll keep that in mind, that the people in this community want to see cuts. They're not ready to pay more taxes. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Okay.